Today we're going to be looking at finding the rule using tables. We'll also have a look at later on, having a look how we can uh, convert a graph to a table and then work out uh, the rule from a graph. So a rule must be true for all values in a table or a graph that relate to that rule. It can't be true for some of them, it must be true for all of them. Otherwise it would not be a rule or a relationship. No relationship would be shown between them. So for a linear rule, a linear graph, we uh, can get a rule that has this sort of format. It looks like this. So it, has, it looks like y equals mx plus c, where m and c, we can replace those with numbers to fit our rule, to suit the rule that we've got, to suit the graph that we've got. So x and y are the variables that are in the relationship, they're the ones that are being related, but m could be any number, m could be any positive or negative number. C as well can be any, other, any number and it, they can be cho chosen, we can find what they are to suit the rule that we have. So how do we find each of those rules? Well, firstly to look at m, m is the amount that y increases as x increases by 1. So as x gets larger and larger by 1, the amount that y increases, increases will be m. So the amount that y increases every time we add 1 to x. So if y decreases though as x increases, so as x gets bigger, if y gets smaller, then m will be negative, m is negative. C, when we're looking to find C, we, uh, C is the value of Y when X is equal to zero. So if X is equal to zero in this form here, you can see that this whole thing here would equal zero, so we'd just be left with Y equals C. So we can see that C is going to be equal to Y if we've got X equals zero. So we've got a couple of examples here. This first example here, we've, let's have a look at, at what we've got. We've got x increasing by one each time, so that's good. We can have a look at how much y increases then, because we've got x increasing by one, so it goes from negative two to negative one, that's plus one. Negative one plus one is zero, plus one again is, is one, plus one again is two. So if we have a look at how much y increases here, y is increasing by two, going from negative 1 to 1. We can, if we add 2 again, we've got 3. Add 2 again, we've got 5. Add 2 again, we've got 7. So y is increasing by 2 every time we add 1 to x. So that means that m is going to be equal to 2, just here. m in our equation, it's the one that's attached to x, the one that's multiplied by x, here is, is 2 in this a case, in this case just here. So when we've got, uh, when we're looking for C, C is when X is zero. So if we looked for where X is zero, X is zero here, and we can see that Y is equal to three underneath it. So that means that if we've got in our equation, uh, if, if this is zero, then that means that Y is going to be three. So three is going to be equal to C in this case. So our rule for this problem, our rule here, is y equals 2x plus 3. And we can just very quickly check if one of, the, one of our, substituting one of our values in, actually fits the rule. Because all of the values in the table need to fit the rule. So let's just check for x equals 1. So let's substitute x equals 1 in here. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. And yes, we get 5 as our answer for y. Excellent. So, here having a look at another example, we've got x increasing by 1 each time again, very good. So let's have a look at how much y uh, changes. So y here is going from 1 to 0, to 0 to negative 1, to negative 2, negative 3. So we're subtracting 1 each time, it's, it's decreasing. y is decreasing as x gets bigger. x is getting bigger all the way along here, and y is getting smaller, it's getting less and less. So here, that means that if we're reducing by one, we're subtracting one each time for each y, that means our m is going to be negative one. So here we've got negative x, exactly the same as negative one x. Here, we can then look for our value for c. Our value for c here is going to be when x is equal to zero. So when x is equal to zero, y is equal to negative one. So we've got minus one there. Our rule here is y equals negative x minus one. 
So let's just substitute an example in. So let's substitute in our first one here, just, just uh, choosing one at random. So x equals negative 2, let's substitute that in. So the negative of negative 2, or negative 1 times negative 2 is going to be positive 2, so it's going to be 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, and sure enough, we get that for y for our value there. Okay. Let's look at some other examples. So here, what we're trying to do is find the rule from these tables of values. So here we've got a lot of x values, a lot of y values. Our x values are increasing by one each time here, and they're increasing by one each time for our second example here as well. Three, four, five, six, and seven. So let's look at our first part A. So the y values increase by three. So we've got negative eight, plus three is negative five, plus three, plus three, plus three. So that means that m is equal to 3, okay? They're all increasing by 3 each time as x increases by 1. And when x is 0, y is equal to negative 2. So that means that c must be negative 2. So we can just write our rule, y equals 3, 3x minus 2. And we can just really quickly check. So let's choose one of our values, uh, x equals 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. And we get 1 for y there as well. So we know, oh, we can, we can, um, we've checked our rule there with one of our values. So let's have a look at b. So the y values decrease by 2. So as uh, x increases by 1, y decreases by 2, so we're going negative 5 minus 2 to negative 7 minus another 2, minus 2, minus 2. So therefore, m is going to be equal to negative 2. We've got m is equal to negative 2 here. Now, you might notice that we've got a bit of a problem. We don't have a value for 0 here. We don't have uh, when what x is equal to, um, sorry, what y is equal to when x equals 0. So we can get around that by substituting any of, the, any of our points into our equation. So if we substitute a point at random, let's say the point 3, negative 5, just our first point there, we can substitute that into what we know. So we know that m is equal to negative 2, but we don't know c. We know, though, that one of our points on our line is 3, x equal to 3, and y equal to negative 5. So let's choose this point to substitute in for x and y. So we've got y is equal to negative 5, we've got our m there is negative 2 that we've substituted in already, and we've got x is equal to 3. Now we're trying to find c, so we can multiply negative 2 and 3 together and we get negative 6, so now we've got negative 5 equals negative 6 plus c. If we add 6 to both sides, add 6 to here, it will remove this minus 6. So we add 6 to this side and we get positive 1. Add, adding 6 to this side, we just let, are left with c. So we can see that c is equal to 1. So the rule is going to be y is equal to negative 2x plus 1. Now we can just check. Uh, probably better to check a different set of values than 3, negative 5 that we substituted in here already. So let's try x equals 5. So negative 2 times 5 is going to be negative 10. Negative 10 plus 1 is going to be negative 9. So does y equal negative 9 for 5? Yes, it does. So we can see that it fits there perfectly. Our last example for today, we're going to try and find the rule for this graph that we've been given here by first constructing a table of values. So we've got our graph here, our line here, and I've chosen a few of the points on the graph. I've chosen five of the points. So the five points I've chosen are negative one, three, negative three, sorry, negative one, negative three, that's our point there. Zero, negative two, so x equals zero, negative two. One, negative one, so x equals one, y equals negative one. 2, 0, so x equals 2, y equals 0, 3, 1, so th uh, x equals 3, y equals 1, and I've put that into a table, into a table just there. We can have a look at the sort of patterns that we see in the graph and find our m value and find our value for c as well. So our value for m is going to be how much 
y increases as x increases by 1. So notice the values that I've chosen, x does increase by 1. It goes negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. If I'd just chosen three values, say these three values, they wouldn't be increasing by 1. That would increase by 2, going from x equals negative 1 to 1, then 1 to 3. So we need to make sure that, that our values are increasing by 1 each time to find our m. So here we can see y is increasing by 1, increasing by 1, increasing by 1, increasing by 1 each time. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, etc. So our m value is going to be 1. The y value is increased by 1, so therefore m is equal to 1. So we can have a look to find our c when x is equal to 0. So you can see x is equal to 0 here, and that y value is negative 2, so c will be negative 2. You can see that uh, the, our value for c is where it crosses this y-axis on the graph, and that will always be true. Wherever it crosses the y-axis, c will be the number on the y-axis where we cross it, because that's when x is equal to 0, right here at negative 2 in our case. So c is equal to negative 2. So therefore, we can put our rule together. Y is going to be equal to x, because that's the same as 1x, uh, minus 2. Let's just check it and see if it fits our graph, because our graph is where we started. So let's choose an x value on our graph. Let's choose uh, maybe 1 here. So x is equal to 1. So if we substitute it in here, 1 minus 2 is going to be equal to negative 1, and surely we see our y value on our graph is negative 1.